it is one frame episode two. That means episode one, I actually have, and I covered it in a video I already did, but I have the photo from last episode. So there it is, there is the first frame from this series printed out. And it actually, like, I, I love how it turned out. Um, shout out to Impix, I print all my stuff through them, but they do a great job. And then on the back, uh, went ahead and signed it down below, put the date on the, the date that I took the photo, and then I'm gonna number them in the top of which photo it actually is. So yeah, I haven't really figured out a official way to store them yet. I'm probably gonna make some kind of like scrapbook thing or just like a folder where I can keep them nice and pristine and clean and away from damage. So um, that is the first one. Um, really, really excited with how it turned out. And I'm just really excited to see how this series adapts, um, how I'm gonna store the photos, what the photos are gonna look like. Um, yeah, but it wasn't a bad start at all. I enjoyed that photo quite a bit. And honestly, that's all that matters. Today, I actually have to get going fairly quick. We are going to try our um, luck at a nice golden hour sunset photo. So, whoo, that exposure is gonna be way overdone. I apologize about that. But um, I've got a little under an hour, a little over an hour actually, until the sun sets. I've got a location in my mind that I wanna hit up. So, um, I've already got my bag kinda packed there and hopefully we can get to the spot set up in a timely manner and then take the shot with zero complications. There's the man. As always, here is the A7 III and there is a clean SD card. So not a single image on this guy. Starting right now, if I click that shutter, um, that's my photo for this episode. So hopefully that doesn't happen and I can actually successfully get the photo again, uh, but we'll see. Okay, like I said, I have just a little over an hour to get to the spot, so I'm going to wrap this up really quickly, pack everything up and get out to that spot. And hopefully we get ourselves a good composition. Let's go. All right, so I just pulled up um, over here at the uh, Clinton Lake Dam. Um, figured I'd try to get a shot of the sun going down uh, across the water. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna head down to the foot of the dam here. There's a little pier or whatever that, it's not a pier, it's just like a little concrete structure that comes out. <clears throat> uh, and so I was gonna see if I can try to get under that and maybe set up there or set up the shot with it, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I wanna shoot the sunset itself or shoot the dam as the sun setting, so we'll see. Uh, as I get down there, we can kinda look at the, the comps, but um, yeah, for now, let's grab stuff, get down there, and go from there. Okay, so this was pretty much the spot that I had in mind. And there's not a single other person down here, which is like the first time I've ever seen that, but uh, so, and I forgot to mention the, lens that's on the a7 III uh, is the 24-70 f2.8 uh, G Master again. Uh, so that's the one I'll be using. So the two compositions that I had in mind were maybe a little farther down if I'm going to shoot the lake in the sunset. I still got like 40 minutes till um, sunset so I've got plenty of time. Um, or have it lined up to get, you can kind of see the uh, like the pier thing I was talking about. I thought it might be cool to have that in the shot, um, but I don't know. I, as I look at it a little bit more, I think I might like this frame a little bit better um, than just shooting the, the sunset. So we'll see. Um, I might try to go down a little bit more. I don't know, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up here and set the camera up and see, play around with those compositions and uh, see what it looks like on, on each side, so. Okay, so I've got it set up toward the sunset. Uh, and then this, I don't know if you can tell, the glare might be too harsh, but that's kind of what we're working with as far as how it looks. Um, and I'm honestly, I honestly like it a lot. Um, I make sure I'm not like super blown out here. Uh, there we go. Um, I like it a lot. Um, I haven't pointed the camera over toward the little thing over there yet, so I haven't checked that composition, but um, 
I like this quite a bit. I'm at one two hundredth of a second for the shutter right now, and I don't need to be. It's not a tripod, uh, but I'm also at f16 ISO 200 right now. Um, that's kind of the look that I liked the most. So um, we'll see. I'm going to point it over here, see what this composition looks like, and then try to decide the two. Like I said, I've got plenty of time till uh, sunset, so I might actually, depending on, because it doesn't. I don't think the golden hour is going to be anything super spectacular it usually isn't in the winter you don't have colors galore like you do in the uh the spring or the summertime but um yeah so if if i like one of these two enough with the given light i might go ahead and just take the shot now um or actually wait till sunset and see what happens so um i don't know but let's check out this other comp here and uh, go from there okay so this one i'm not as thrilled about um, at least from this spot. So I feel like if I go with this composition, um, I would have to get a little bit closer. And the only thing is, uh, I feel like this specific comp would work best if I go out to the right more and then try to capture the front of it as well. But I can't do that because that's all water. So, um, I don't know. I might, um, I might try to get a little bit closer to it because I don't want the whole, I didn't want the whole photo to be centered on that um, thing, but given the space that I have, that might be what it ends up being. So I think I'm leaning a little bit more, more towards the actual sunset shot, um, at least for now. So let's, um, let's go a little bit closer and then see what that looks like. Okay, so I walked down there a little bit um, and I, le I left my camera right there, which don't ever do that in a public place. I just can see like all around me um, and I saw that no one was around me. So, uh, but I walked down there and um, didn't like it, didn't like it at all. So I think the frame we're gonna do is gonna be the, the sunset shot. Now I just have to decide whether or not I like having this foreground brush right here in the shot, or if I want to keep it clean and just water and just get the stuff in the in the background all the way out there. I don't know. That's what I'm going to have to decide here. Because um, I lined it up the first when I lined it up first uh, the first time I did it, I had that foreground uh, brush and it didn't look too bad. I actually didn't mind it. Um, I can't like there's so much of a glare. <laughs> I can't see if I'm just gonna be completely overexposed or not. So this video might look terrible, uh, but we'll see. Anyways, I'm gonna play around again a little bit with the, uh, the actual composition here. Uh, so I'm gonna move it just slightly over there and see if I like it without the, uh, this, this brush here, so. Okay, so I've bumped my tripod like four times already and I've messed up the composition after squaring it away, but I think this is the one so and i don't know how well this camera can actually pick it up but if you look down here in the corner there's a little bit of the melted ice showing so that's just water and then the rest is ice i don't know whether i want to frame it up to where it's just the ice or just have that also have that little bit of like melting or melted ice showing in the corner i probably am going to go with a more uniform just like completely frozen lake um, just move it up a little bit to where it chops that off uh, but I don't know, because if you zoom out to 50, there's something about that specific shot where you have just a little bit of melted lake showing that looks really cool to me. I don't know. I'm definitely going to take it at sunset, so when the sun is dipped down below there, so just here in a few minutes. But um, this is, this is going to be the shot, I know for a fact. So I've got my little um, handheld remote too. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this in ensuring that I don't uh, don't bump anything and I should have a pretty clean shot because um, I'm rocking one one hundredth of a second now on my shutter speed so uh, but I think this is it I'm gonna make a few more micro adjustments and then we're gonna get ready and take this shot so the final settings we've got shutter speed 1 60th uh, aperture f11 ISO 200 and white balance is set to 4800 uh, I framed it up uh, at 50 mil right there and I went ahead and decided, I think I like, for some reason, and I know a lot of people will probably disagree with me, I actually like having the melted 
part of the lake in there, just a little bit of the water showing through. We'll see how I like it when I get it onto the computer, but I've got my manual focus set. I think I've got it focus set to where you're gonna get some of the ice and the tree's sharp right there. Uh, but it's set at F11, so I mean, <laughs> if I miss focus on this one, um, I did something extremely wrong, which is not um, totally <laughs> impossible, but okay. So I think I've got it set up. Um, I've got it fairly level. Uh, I like right now, and you can't see it right here. Well, you can, you can kind of see it. I like how there are some uh, flares coming through, or just those those um, those light flares coming um, around the the landmass there from the sun. I really like it right now, but I, I don't know if I want to wait till <laughs> it goes down a little bit more, or if I should take the shot now. I don't know. I'm torn. Um, I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, see what kind of uh, what kind of light I get. Just a few more minutes here. Just changed my drive mode to single. Um, not that I don't think I would have taken a bunch um, using the remote, but just to be safe, I noticed it was on um, the high drive mode. So um, this way I only get the, the single shot here. But okay, so I think this is it. Cause as it's going down a little bit more, I'm actually not liking the light as much as I was. So, um, but, oh gosh, I don't, I don't know because I don't know if I want to wait a little bit more until it's just peeking out or uh, I don't know. This is one of those things where it's like, if you're not a photographer, you have no idea what this feels like. Okay, so <laughs> the remote's not gonna work. So I have to do this with my hand. Luckily we're on a tripod. So, okay, here we go. Here is the frame. And just like that, now I have to watch the sunlight get even better than what it was when I just took the shot. <laughs> okay, so good news, the lighting got worse. <laughs> so I think when I took the photo, um, it was actually probably the perfect time. The only thing is there's a giant, what looks like upside down exclamation mark because of the light on the uh, the ice. And I, it's okay, like it's it adds a little bit to the photo but I think it became a little bit more prominent the longer that I waited to take the photo. So hopefully that doesn't completely screw it up and hopefully everything is in focus. <laughs> so I kind of had to go ahead and rush and take that shot because there was a massive group of people coming. Um, and so if I tried to record there, A, I don't like recording in front of people. I just need to get over that. But also B, you wouldn't be able to hear anything because they were so loud. I think I got it because as I packed up and uh, as I was walking away, the lighting was absolutely awful. Uh, like I said, you don't get much good lighting during golden hour in the winter, so <sighs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I got when I get home. Hopefully it's not a complete bust, but day two, frame number two in the bag. And we are back home. It's actually like 1030 right now at night. <laughs> I had some other things to do before I could film this second part of the video, but I haven't looked at the photo yet. So I've got it right here. Um, I dragged it onto the computer. Haven't looked at it yet. Same as last episode, I'm just going to display it on your screen and then kind of just live react to it. So if I'm being honest, I don't know how well this photo turned out. I got more and more nervous about the focus um, as I was driving home because I set it to where it wasn't all the way rocked to like infinity because uh, I wanted to get a little bit of the ice, but I also set it to where the um, landmass was still sharp, like the trees. <sighs> At least so I thought, so I don't know. We'll see how this ends up being. Um, this might be just a absolute disaster of a photo, uh, but we'll see. Uh, there's a lot of concerns. So anyways, I'll stop talking. Let's get into it. Let's open the photo and see how we did here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so, yep. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so yeah, not my favorite photo at all. Um, so there's a lot of things I'd touch up. We've got some sensor dust on there. Um, it's very, it's, it is soft. It's very soft, uh, which is not a terrible thing. I could have even framed it lower because <clears throat> I got too much sky, I think. Um, and the ice is, I think, I 
think focus is on the ice like just below the landmass, which is, yeah, see, I should have rocked it all the way. Um, the, uh, I'll be curious when I watch this footage back whether or not this streak right here <clears throat> was there or not, or if it was as prominent that, um, like I said, you kind of have the reverse like exclamation mark going, going on, which isn't terrible. It's still really cool, but um, oof, yeah, I don't know, guys. This is not my favorite photo in the world. I am going to see how much I can help it in post, and I think ISO, I should have gone a little higher in the ISO range, I think, because uh, I think it was like at 125, but uh, this is, this could have been a little, little higher here. It's not terrible. It's not a terrible composition. I think the idea was there, but the execution was off. And also, like I said, that group of kids, it, there was like maybe eight or nine kids that were coming down. Um, and so I wanted to, by the time they would have reached me, would, would have been like peak time to shoot, um, if not a little too late. So I rushed the shot just because of that. And uh, for one, like I kind of mentioned, I just got to get over that. But also two, um, I just need to focus on what I'm doing instead of not letting anything in my surroundings affect the actual shot. So um, I, I'll have to, you know what I need to start doing? I need to start giving these a rating, like right here. Initial rating, one through 10. Uh, that's what we'll do. We'll do a scale of one, two, ten, one through 10. Um, I would give this a four, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, this is not my best work by any means. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Um, okay, well, let's get this into the editor um, and see what I can do uh, because all's not lost. I can maybe maybe pull a little more detail out of it and you know make some some colors pop and get rid of some imperfections and you know what I think I should have done too. And because I decided to go ahead and go with that little bit of melted ice showing or the melted part of the lake, I think I should have just framed it up to where it was just ice all the way instead of getting that. So um, hindsight, right? What can you do? Okay. Anyways, let's, um, let's jump into editing this thing uh, and we'll, we'll see where we're at afterwards. All right, guys, well, the edit is done. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and throw the finished photo on screen for you right now. Um, and I'll kind of walk through everything I did. So I did remove quite a bit of uh, things in the photo. I removed all the sensor dust. Don't give me too much grief on the sensor dust. I know there's a lot on my camera. Um, I haven't cleaned it in a very long time or I haven't gotten it professionally cleaned in a really long time. So I need to do that. Um, but anyways, got rid of all the sensor dust, got rid of all the, um, the planes in the background. I just didn't really like any of them there. Um, cleaned up the water a lot, got rid of some ice. There was one piece that was really stubborn and I just eventually ended up giving up on trying to heal it, at least within Lightroom, and I just cropped it out. <laughs> so that's, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <clears throat> but um, the main thing that I did to salvage this photo, um, barely, was go for the film look. <laughs> Because if it's out of focus, just add grain and call it vintage. Um, so that's what I did, and it didn't turn out too bad. It, if I had to give this a new rating, so on a scale of one to ten, 
I would still leave it at a four. It's not my favorite thing in the world. Um, I do like how the colors turned out <clears throat> and I did kind of give it a nice Arctic look because of the frozen lake and I, I kind of, um, I added some more blue into the, uh, the lake there and then I brought some more warmth then and it kind of turned out cool how you could see the, the warmth of the sun reflecting off the ice. So there's some cool aspects of it, that's for sure. Um, Am I super proud of it? No, I, I like the first one better than uh, than the second one. But that's the thing with this series is that I'm probably going to have the majority of these photos not necessarily be my favorite because I only get one shot. So, um, but it's cool because I'm already thinking of ways to how I could have done it better or you know different settings that I should have tried rather than the ones that I did. So it's going to be a learning process. And that's kind of the whole point of this whole series. So, but regardless, we're getting this thing printed and shipped my way, so I will have a physical copy of it. I don't think I showed you guys, but the first frame that I captured from last episode, deleted. So the only thing that I have left of it um, is that physical copy that I have now. Uh, there might still be, it might still be on my Lightroom, so I have to go in there and get it out of my cloud. But um, regardless, it's pretty much gone. Same thing with this one, I'm gonna delete it once I get the uh, physical copy, and the only ones that will exist are those physical ones, so. Anyways, that wraps up the second episode of the One Frame series, guys. Thanks so much for watching, if you watched it all the way through. Even if you didn't, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, it's a fun series. I'm actually having a lot of fun. Frustrating when it doesn't work out, you know, but such is life. Give the video a like if you enjoyed it enough and also subscribe to my channel for more future episodes and creative content in the future. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.